you could draw less, that almost never happens. Uh, but yeah, the card is insanely, insanely good. Um, One-sided card draw. Um, if you open hand it, you won't need to go get something like Ad Nauseam. You'll just go get Mana and cast this instead. If you take an uh, incredible early pressure from an aggro deck, um, and you don't get a high tide, or you don't get a set of double tutors to set up Time Spiral as your best opener. You don't really have anything you want to shuffle back in as of yet. You know, you just get like a land mana rock kind of hand. You hit your first tutor, um, and you've been taking damage from aggro player. You can just recurring insight to gain tons and tons of cards, and then you can spiral out off of that. You can just take Ad Nauseam out of the equation because you've been taking too much damage and then just easily storm kill off that in a Yawgmoth's Will. Um, time Spiral, you can set up with your High Tide, pitch your High Tide back in, grab it again off your 7. Um, it's very easy to just hit into Instant Win with just 7 cards when you Spiral out because you get fully untapped mana. You're already at at least 6 and if you did Spiral Tide, it's definitely going to be a kill. Or if you know, you had a bunch of storm and floated a bunch of mana first like there's lots of things that'll give you good odds of just winning and then there's my favorite card maybe in the format is mind society it's the most powerful storm card ever printed my buddy joked with me what if they made a card that said uh storm draw a card add one mana any color to your mana pool and i said they already have that card it is mind society it's literally like a wheel a wheel for Storm X, with how many cards you get a wheel, but every card is free. So every mana card becomes like, so this that used to net 2, this just nets 5. Not this, this. This, you get a draw. You get an, you hit another wheel. You get a wheel and a wheel, except this wheel is now 0. You know, you hit Yogg Wheel, win. You hit Mind Over Matter, win. You hit these giant draw spell, win, win, win. You know, uh, <laughs> you hit your tendrils, now you don't have to pay to cast it. Um, you can easily mine Sasaya after these big draw spells for as little as, you know, 9 or 10 and win. Um, you don't even need much more than that. It's just a, a slightly better than Wheel for free at that point. But, like, that, that is enough to just win games. Um, I, I don't know that the, I, I'm trying to remember what the, the lowest I've hit this for on was. I, I know I've cast it for 6 and hit for a win. I don't know if I've cast it for four or five and actually won off of that or not. Mainly because you don't ca you, there's not a situation where you would cast it for just four or five, and most of the time it'd be like a waste. Like there's just a situation doesn't arise where you need to do that that often. At least in when I've been piloting the deck. So, um, but yeah, I gave you a pretty thorough overview of every card in the deck, uh, and real quickly, I'm going to show you. Uh, the last game I played, the uh, games, I think this is the one. Um, just to show you how uh, when a line is difficult, this is one of the last games I played. Uh, you can, and it looks like maybe you couldn't hit, you, maybe sometimes you actually can if you know what you want to be doing here. Um, we open with an ad nauseum in our hand. Two mana sources in the form of lands. One is an island. One gives us the color saturation. We get blue and black from our Demir Signet. But we're holding Tendrils and Grave Shot, which would seem to be fairly dead. And we have a Snapcaster Mage, which we've already told you is one of the weaker cards in this build. And we don't have much to interact with him. But I'm going to keep. And the reason I'm keeping is, I have Ad Nauseam and an Accelerator and three mana sources. And you don't pitch that hand ever. It doesn't matter that the rest of, rest of the hand is crap. I hit the mountain here. So I think this is when I was still playing the mountain. I'm, I think I switched the mountain for... I think I switched the mountain back for the uh, the Blood Crypt. I, I think I took the Blood Crypt out and I decided I would have rather had the Blood Crypt. Though this game I don't think it matters. Um, the Blood Crypt is just better. Don't play the mountain. I guess you can play the mountain if you want to, but I don't like the mountain. I've not liked the mountain too many times to want to play it anymore. I'd rather him, him be an island almost every time. But I wanted another red source, so... We top deck Imperial Sea here. Um, so, I'm going to put out my double source. I'm going to run out my signet. I'm not going to tutor here. This guy is putting aggro on board. 
This is bad because I'm on ad nauseum plant. I don't want him to hit me. As of so far, he's spreading the damage to be political. And he's kind of a noob. So that doesn't scare me too much. I'm hoping maybe he hits this guy this turn. I put my land out there. Now notice, I don't play the Mox Diamond even though I have this mountain that I told you I did not like. And the reason I do not play the Mox Diamond is because the Mox Diamond is free mana after ad nauseum. So you do not want to waste your Mox Diamond here when it's going to make you slightly stronger post ad nauseum. That would just be incredibly bad. In the same vein, we're going to miss our colored mana and our land drop next turn if I do not go get a land with this Imperial Seal. Now we could go get a Soul Ring or a Mana Crypt, but we don't want to do that. And the reason we don't want to do that is because we want to hit those cards off of Ad Nauseum. Um, we will hit a land no matter what to make our land drop. We're going to pass with this Ad Nauseum so that we get an optimal mana, so we have a better chance to hit. We're already taking damage. Our hand doesn't represent anything that really does a lot for mana. You don't really need the Tendrils or Grape Shot at this phase, or directly post Ad Nauseum. It's nice to have one. Uh, mainly the tendrils, but you know, uh, right now we're not in a super, super good situation. But here's the other thing, is this guy is playing Nekusar, and I'm going to have to, since I'm not going to be able to cast it on turn, next turn to go all in at zero, I'm going to have to have extra mana to remove Nekusar. Um, so that's a pain in my ass. So we're going to seal for a underground sea. And the reason we seal for underground sea is because we already have more than enough red fix. It gives us black fix, and it has island subtyping, so it is going to double tap for our high tide. And we absolutely need this. This way we're going to have three islands on the, our kill turn instead of uh, two which is huge and opens up our high tide and t uh, turnabout lines a lot. So now we pass into our ad nauseum plan. They don't know what we're doing. Aggro player goes underworld connections. We don't care. This is horrible play against us. We get hit again. We take damage. As I said, damage for us is significant. But we've only taken six. So that's six less we get a hit with our ad nauseum. This is okay. What sucks is Nekusar Mind Razor means we cannot hit as hard with Ad Nauseum. He's going to deal us two damage on our turn, so we have to factor this into our hit. In addition, and more importantly, we're not going to be able to use our large draw spells off whatever we hit, our refills, our cantrips like Brainstorm, without getting bitch slapped by this guy, which means we could also not hit as much. So, we have to remove him, probably, no matter what we hit to go off. Luckily, we don't have to waste a tutor or something finding an answer because we already got one of our outs, which is the Grape Shot. <laughs> Another out would be, you know, Pyroblast or Chain of Vapor or something like this. Um, so if you hit one of these spells or something that tutors it, you can grab that first and deal with the Nekusar. We already have the Grape Shot, so we're going to lead... Um, our plan right now is to lead the Grape Shot into the Nekusar. But first we want to see what we hit on Ad Nauseam and see just how things go. Now, this is almost a card... <laughs> that I should have cast Ad Nauseam in response to. No, because he puts Triggered Ability on the stack. Because, yeah, because if, if he targets me with this card, then I can cast Ad Nauseam with his uh, Triggered Ability on the stack, and it does not matter. But, um, it's uh, still bad for me no matter what if this card would have targeted me. This is as bad as a Duress, except it costs four. But um, I think he targets Nekusar. No, he targets Mono Black Dude, which is kind of weird. Which is why I think he probably shouldn't have spread the love. He should just beat my face in or Nekusar's face in. But he chose not to do this. He targets, in my opinion, the worst target with this card, um, which is really dumb. So now I get to cast my Ad Nauseam. And the reason I think this is a good game to show uh, you when you're trying to learn the deck is because... I am not hitting what I want to hit here. Where's my hand? Recurring Insight. This is not what we want to hit to go off. This isn't Mana or Storm. <coughs> Land is good. Brainstorm is okay, but not necessarily something we want. Merchant Scroll is our first good, good hit. This gives us access to High Tide or Turnabout, depending on what we hit next. Um, and it's just very good. We, we don't even mind casting this. Um, pretty necessary to get our Storm up for that Grape Shot. 
future site, not what we want to hit in this situation. We are hitting the top of our curve and eating all of our ad nauseum life away. We are not hitting low like we are supposed to. We are hitting the entire top of the curve. We have none of the combo cards for this future site. This was what's looking to shape off to be a whiff. Counter spell right behind it. Not a good card, right? Factor fiction behind that. Yes, it digs, but yet again, the top of our curve, and it's not getting us any closer to storming out. Blood Crypt. Maybe I did, I did have the Blood Crypt. What the fuck did I cut for a mountain? Maybe I had 32 lands and I added a spell. I hate when I forget things like this. All I know is I, I, I felt confident cutting the mountain, but now I can't remember what I put in. Maybe I did just put in another island. I don't know. Land. Yet again. Didn't hurt me. Still nothing good. Land. Still nothing good. Cabal Ritual. This is a hit. This is a good card. Even though we're only at one in yard now, we can easily feed this cabal to our mine. I actually make a slight misplay, I'll show you, but I still haven't hit good enough. Bam! Here's my payoff, is Windfall. Windfall might not even look like a good hit here. How do you build storm with Windfall? Well, Windfall is a hit here because we're at 17 cards. And when we just whipped this many times, do you know what this means? It means that we have that many more good uh, odds of hitting cards off the top of our deck with Windfall. So our line just paid off, because Windfall is cheap enough that we'll be able to cast it behind a Grape Shot with these cheap spells. And we'll still have enough cards in our hand to be able to have a very good odds of hitting. And I'm going to show you which I mean. I think I might hit a couple more times because I think I can take one more set of damage. Yes. That's what I do. I hit a Lotus Petal, which makes it even better. Now I've got extra mana. This is the reason I was hitting. I'm still looking for just a little more good cards I should have hit. Um, when I hit the Lindwills, I have to stop. I can still hit six drops. I'm going to take two from Nekusar. Um, I'm probably going to take other damage, maybe from casting a two in phase two after this windfall. I have to stop here. I cannot hit again. Um, Nekusar pings me, and I draw my two cards. I get a land. I get an intuition. The land is not very good. Intuition is very good, but I don't know that we're going to be able to pull it off in our line. So, now we've got a Mox Diamond and a Lotus Petal to lead with. This gives us uh, Storm 2. Yes. Um, and we could pretty much Merchant Scroll into our High Tide and then Grape Shot out Nekusar is step one so that we do not die to him. So you open with your mana. You play your land. We go get our high tide because we're going to be trying to hit turnabout. And the reason we ha know that this is good because we're going to draw like double hand, like 14 cards or something with this windfall. And we're going to be floating mana. And we're either going to hit turnabout or we're going to hit tutors and free mana and go get the turnabout. And either way, all these cards in this hand are going to graveyard, so they're all going to be a resource if we use any of those tutors to hit a Yogwill or uh, a Past in Flames. Our odds of hitting because of how many good gas cards we still have in the deck is insane. And these are seriously good cards to bend. Like, they don't have a graveyard hit on board. We already have our Killcon sitting in graveyard when we bend to this. So, the slight misplay I make this turn is I was thinking when I play the island, I do not want to fetch water to grave. I cannot afford to take the damage for the phase two when I want to use my tutors and such, or a Gataxan probe or something like that. But what I really should have done has fe is fetched a, a basic island and gone to four. And I would have had one more uh, card in my graveyard, so I could have cast the Cabal Ritual without burning my Brainstorm. But first, we're going to uh, Grape Shot this guy out, because we cannot win with this Nekusar in play. Um... Now, we would not have to have cast this Brainstorm if we had fetched the island. This is a slight misplay, but I don't want to understate it because little misplays like this can be the difference between you uh, whiffing and not. So, I don't make mistakes very often, but this was definitely a mistake by not just fetching this island, in my opinion, um, in hindsight. Um, so, we have to cast the Brainstorm, something I wouldn't normally have done. Um, I guess you could if you think you're going to hit something, but I mean, even if you hit even mana, like something that costs zero and taps for mana, you're going to win falling into it anyway. I mean, really, this is just a waste of one mana. My misplay was I could have saved one mana to take one damage, and that would have been a good trade. I mean, I guess you could have got really lucky off this brainstorm, but even then, yeah, you're still drawing to the same card, so it does nothing. 
Um, right now it's just netting me a mana with my Cabal, whereas I could have already been netted the two extra mana just by using the fetch. But either way, we are going to... Uh, actually, no, what I should have done is crack the pedal early. But I guess I was trying to save the mana because I didn't know what I was going to need off the hit. Either way, I should have fetched to the island. Um, but we're going to windfall. We're going to float the blue because we need blue mana um, for our hits. And we're also going to leave the pedal open because we might need double blue. And we're going to uh, leave it open because maybe we need the red. As you see when we hit, we hit the turnabout. No need to use the tutors or anything. We didn't get a cheap top deck tutor that hits it, but we did hit it, so that's a hit. Um, we're going to untap with turnabout. Now we have lots of mana. Goblin Electromancer. Personal Tutor gives us Yogwin, and Ponder makes it the end to hand tutor, as we said before. So, as I said, not always the best tutor, but still efficient and gets you what you need in most phases of the game. We cast Yogmuscle with this graveyard, and from this point, I think anyone could figure out that this is a kill. But just for the sake of you are getting to see how I go off, we open with mana, we re-high tide, we return about, you can start to see this third island come into play a little bit, we re-ritual, we tutor for our remand with our merchant scroll, we go get our mind's desire, we cast it for like 20, with a 21 card graveyard all ready for us to yog roll back out, we get 20 free cards for free storm. Now look at all this free storm. We get a mind over matter, our candle bra to untap again. Out comes our soul ring. This is when it's just massive overkill. Um, and you, th th this is what I was talking about when you don't have to go infinite. See, I could have taken the one damage. But this is what I'm talking about when you don't um, go infinite, but you're pretty much infinite, so it doesn't fucking matter, right? Like, my Yogg will is already active. I had to use it at a point in my line where I'm going to have to use my Remand to get the kill. Because I don't get to use um, the Storm spells and Remand twice. I just get to use them once. So that's fine, because we just use Mind's Desire to cast all our spells so many times our Storm is up to, like, 40. So is this a Storm deck? Yes. Um, and at that point, with the Tendrils, a single Remand, and a Grape Shot, we can still do way more than enough damage without even casting all the cards we hit to take, take them all out of the game. <laughs> Considering they've had no responses and such, even though I fed them cards with Windfall, their decks look pretty bad. They're all tapped down. Um, I have turned online counter spells in my graveyard with my Yogg Wheel. I really don't care. Yes. I guess I don't even get to cast... I remember getting to cast the Grape Shot and Tendrils and stuff this game, but I guess the game kind of bugged out a little bit. Anyway, I'm sure this video was probably longer than I thought. I want to say it was more than 18 minutes. Maybe it turned into two videos. I have no idea. Hopefully not more. But, uh, yeah, it'll kind of show you where my Storm build is currently at and why I like all the cards in it and kind of how to play when you think you don't have a good line, whether or not that hand looked like a whiff or not to you, or you're not hitting the right things. It's almost impossible to whiff with this deck when you've got it built right, especially when you cast uh, not on your turn. So I'm going to end it here.